almost didn't throw the white flag. I was going to give you one more lap. The nine running on the tires. He'll slide up off a turn of four, Jerry. You've got a new race leader, Matthew Lowe. Your race leader with four laps to go. All right. He told you to tell that joke. <laughs> Well, welcome back. It's season three, episode two, and even looking through whoa, these. Whoa, 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 whoa. Season, season three, three episode, episode two? five, because I couldn't see because I'm still trying to figure out if the eclipse is happening. Did the world end? <laughs> I can't see. Ground control to Major Sean. Major Tom. Yeah, my world Tom just ended. Sean. Put, <laughs> take your protein pills and put your helmet on. Can you weld on. with those on? Can you what? Weld. I suppose you could. I can't see a thing because you can put a welding helmet you, on. You and looked see the... directly into the sun yesterday, didn't you? No, not just yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> that was, that eclipse deal was crazy. Did you see him down there? They opened and they put all these kids in like AT and T Stadium and opened the roof. And I mean, they had like huge watch parties all over. And the the path, yeah. the hundred the hundred percent eclipse. Eclipse path, path path went over Central Texas. It went right through diagonally through Texas. Yeah, so they should. Te- they were acting yeah. kind of like Waco they, would have been a great place to be yesterday. Yeah, no. <laughs> Trust me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. My wife wanted to go pr- pretty badly. You wouldn't just take not it. to see the eclipse though. She just wanted to go. She just wanted to go. She just needs an excuse to go down there. So I wore this hat for her today. Oh, that was so Aww. sweet of you. Yeah, it's my. I'm sure, I'm sure she'll think that's just as good as being in Texas. Sure. Exactly. Good, uh, oh, Brett, we're good enough for me. Hat. It's good. Yeah. Now, yeah. If you had the, now, if you had the Whataburger shirt on, you'd have the whole ensemble. Exactly. Yeah, you know, people said the world was going to come to an end after the eclipse. That was the whole thing, you know, whenever that was. Uh, it's always good. I thought that I was, thought that was like, Y2K. I, yeah, yeah I thought exactly. That was Y2K. Y2K. 2020. The zombie apocalypse. None of this has happened Zombies? yet. Zombies? None of this has happened yet. I know. Even after COVID, nobody turned into a zombie. It's still There's a few. <laughs> There's a few, I think, that could probably qualify. <laughs> I'm still trying to figure Some out whether we're actually going to see a Sam Squanch sighting that we can actually see the Sam Squanches. I, I, I called my daughter. Well, I said, how, how did yesterday go? I said, to, well, I, I was actually, I have to pick her up. We took our daughter out of school so she could see the eclipse. It, it sounds pretty irresponsible of me as a parent right but it's here's the thing neat educational she, yeah it's, it's she, cool she's in science class right take yeah. her out of science class why wouldn't the science teacher took him outside this is my point yeah. this yeah. is my point so i said to kennedy while we're going home i was like well i don't understand why is you for science and and they did they said they could you know study hall could go outside if you had he had to have glasses they wouldn't let you go outside because they're afraid a kid's gonna go outside without glasses and look at, look sun. at this i bought these just this uh, morning uh, this, uh, this is the weird things i don't know when i was in like eighth grade i remember an eclipse and we went out and got in like a refrigerator box out in the backyard of of our school here in town yeah. and <laughs> took turns like Going oh. in, and you'd look, they made a viewer, and you went in, you look, you look up, and you see, oh, cool, you get out, and the next, you know, oh, I remember yeah. that when I was a kid, so I'm thinking that's what's going to happen, but no, it didn't happen, they could, they would, they, they didn't do that, so I took Ken out of school, and brought her home, and we we're going home, I said, so why, you know, did why? you find that refrigerator box? I thought you made viewers in science, and she said, yeah, science class, and I was like, well, why don't you, why don't you go outside for science class and look at the eclipse, she goes, well, we had a, t- a sub today. I'm like, oh, a sub. Why oh, the science teacher took the eclipse. Because the science teacher took the eclipse today. Today. Oh, yeah. to watch the eclipse. Why did you have a sub today? And her response was, my science teacher went to Illinois so she could see the full eclipse. And I'm thinking, you there got you a go. whole classroom of kids. Right. Schools, well, at least here in Vinton, they, they didn't go outside to, to see the eclipse. So I took her out, and we, we watched it for about an hour or so. And then I took her back to school. I had, a, I had an appointment in West, in West Glen yesterday, and I... Come rolling down to this building, you know, one of them four-story buildings or whatever, and everybody's outside. And, I, you know, I'm just, I'm like not even thinking about it. I'm like, oh, great, I'm going to be late for my appointment because a dang fire alarm or something went off because everybody's standing outside in the parking lot. And I get up there, and I'm like, oh, they're watching the eclipse. Yeah. That's right. That was yeah. today. We ended up doing the same thing here. We bought, like, the last four pairs of eclipse glasses yesterday. Um, and then, you know, I brought a pair here, and we took turns going outside and looking at it. I love it's cool. When, it's cool. When's, how, the, mean, next, it, when's it, the next one going to be? Did somebody say like 2044? 2044 is the I think 2045, one. but then there's going to be one in 2020 every year. But but yeah, I think the next one that's going to be visible anywhere in the States is like seven or eight years in Alaska or something yeah. like right. that. 
Right. So there's an eclipse. Fascinating. Nate said, Nate can't hear, people can't hear Nate. Every 18 months. Every 18 months. months one happens an somewhere. somewhere. You sound sarcastic, Jim. But I, I, had, <laughs> I had thought that they had said it was the last time this century that the that an eclipse, a, a 100% eclipse, would pass over the state of Texas. Oh, so I'm in sure. Texas, they were, they were having parties for three right. days and oh concerts. Oh, my goodness. It was and crazy. They, they had no school. They closed the government buildings down. There was a lot of things that they did. And here, you know, it was just like another day. So it was I know in Des Moines, they said it was 84% coverage. Yeah. So I th- it wasn't... Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. I know, I well, that was like the deal when we were down in the fall at uh, Batesville, you know. Batesville was one of the, it was in that right. hundred, it was in that line of 100% right. coverage, and they were getting phone calls about, it. are you guys going to do something at your well, speedway, they, oh. camping and this and that, we can come watch the eclipse? Well, they had a map on online that showed all of the, the Airbnbs and all of the hotels and stuff that were sold out, and, yeah. and it followed the path of the eclipse. Yeah. People were traveling across people the People going to Arkansas. To I'd say, oh, yeah. Some, some of our members in Arkansas have posted on Facebook. There must have been a 100% eclipse. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Arkansas. Arkansas yeah. was, yeah. Batesville, Batesville they said, was, was like right the ahead. hottest, was like the spot in yeah. Arkansas where you would get the 100%. Very cool. Producer Nate wouldn't watch it's it with the boys. He did. He, he did. did. He we were going to do a podcast it. yesterday, and he's like, no, I'm, oh. I'm going to take the day off and watch the eclipse. It's good for him, though. Yeah. It's educational. I was going to buy some Like, glasses. you're going to see it every day. So, is, so uh, let's talk racing. So, like, usually when there's a full moon out, we always, you know, oh, God, what's going to happen, yeah, you know, at the races? Ropes. So, is, is, did the eclipse have any bearing on last weekend's races, do you think? I don't think so. Jim? I think it kicked the wind up. Yeah, yeah. Did, did definitely did that. <laughs> races were good. Saturday, especially. <laughs> Holy goodness! Yeah, was... I took a video of the of the of the flag in the infield at Boone during the hobby stock feature, which is the last race. It was of the still night. straight out, and it was blowing like no tomorrow. Mm-hmm. I went in the infield and got out of my car for the heat races, and I lasted a, maybe like three laps, and I got back in my car. Like, oh, I know. we watched. We this, I'm getting back in my We car. didn't come. I, I watched I'm the heat races at Boone in, from my car. I said, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I came over to the TV truck, <laughs> which is pretty cool. I mean, I took a few I pictures. And warm. In there. You really should do, I don't know, Nate, you really should do some sort of uh, behind the scenes. Behind the scenes. Uh, when you're using that equipment, you know, we've got a production truck. IMCA TV has a production truck, and, and Nate does it a fantastic job and i'm like i mean they're like there's wires going everywhere and there's a big equipment rack down one side of the wall and there's a whole wall of tvs and there's three guys four guys sitting in there and i'm like does all this stuff actually work i mean look at all these wires and plugs and everything i was gonna take pictures but i was a steward uh, thursday night for the Frostbuster and walked in there for a little bit and took a video and i asked nate do you care if i share it on my snapchat on my social media the people that commented on it yeah it's so cool i mean it's the, if you watch a an nfl broadcast or, or something like that on tv when they take you inside the truck and people are waving yeah. that's the same feel yeah. that you have for this it's yeah cool. it's a little smaller we don't have a, a small we don't have a semi are we've right. got how, how long is it 28 foot trailer 16 even bigger <laughs> you know what would make make it neat if there was LED lights. One of these days, one, one of these, these days, days, you and Matt are gonna have a twenty eight foot trailer. No uh, LED lights trailer. in there. Bigger, yeah, it, bigger isn't always better. Yeah, it's yeah, maybe twenty eight exactly. foot long with the with with the with the with the van. Yeah, but it, it, it's small uh, but mighty. It kind of tells a story. It tells a story of the dedication, I think, and the investment that we've taken that has been taken to. Uh, Stream IMCA sanctioned events the best we can. Yeah. You know, I mean. The product's incredible. I mean, the product is just incredible, what you see. Yeah, I was I was watching. Well, it was <clears> during the National Anthem. Um, I was on the, the backstretch during the National Anthem, and I kept seeing this little dot on the, on, the, on the ground on the racetrack, and I'm like, what is that? And I'm looking around. I'm like, is the eclipse going on? I mean, what's going on it's here? I'm eclipse. like, what is that dot? And they had the, – I couldn't find it. It took me a little while. Was it the drone? They had the drone out in this 30-mile-an-hour wind or whatever it was, and that drone was literally, like, sitting still, and it was, like, at an angle like this just so it wouldn't, you know, blow it wherever it was going to blow it to. But I was like, how do you fly a drone in 25-mile-an-hour That's what I asked Mike. I said, he goes, oh, you just fly it. It was impressive. It's probably second nature to them. But it didn't stop. The wind around here has been brutal. I think it – I don't think it was too bad yesterday. It wasn't too great yesterday either. Yesterday was good. 
Today, uh, today I think it's supposed to be nice. But the racing was good. You know, yeah, I went to was. Boone. I think you, you, Ryan went to all of them. Yeah, I Jim just... went to the Frostbusters and the Dodge City, as if he can't get enough racing. You know, Jim. He is likes in... to drive more than he admits, yeah. or doesn't like to sleep, <laughs> well, or got... doesn't like to be home. Well, I mean, you know, he. Does, I mean, he we know, we know, one. we knew he was going to the first one because he likes how it feels in Stewart. So then he went off to Dodge City after that. So <laughs> why not? Jim has right access way. to Spec Part One, so I mean, yeah, he's he can go pretty much wherever he wants. Yeah. I think Spec Part One would add a tough time landing in Dodge City Saturday, taken out by yeah, a they... tumbleweed. Jim had said Tumbleweed. that, uh, I don't know which, uh, I think it was Clay Sellard, I think. Jim had said Clay Sellard showed up to the racetrack with an open trailer and a pickup truck because he, yeah. he couldn't take his hauler to the racetrack. Yeah, they had they actually had ro- uh, closures because yeah. Yeah, closures and blowing semis parked down. semis. Yeah, blowing semis blowing over. over. It was so bad. Yeah, yeah, I think Clay lives like 15 miles from the racetrack. Yeah. It's yeah. not like he was going very far. There was a guy that was in Boone Saturday that he got 25 yeah. to 30 miles to the gallon to his hauler normally. He said he got 10 to 12 on his trip to Yeah. Boone. It was crazy windy. Wind-powered vehicles is what we needed. But you know what? Wind-powered race. race cars, why not? There you go. Yeah. A little little wind ain't going to stop us from racing. Yeah. I think it would be a little problematic to race sprint cars in 65-mile-an-hour winds. It would have made it exciting. But you know what the For main sure. thing is, whether it be Dodge City or Boone or any of the Frostbusters, we got the features in. Yes. We Got the features in. I think, I mean, it, 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 the rain, I don't know where the rain started, but it was heading towards Boone. We were talking about it at about 6 o'clock at Boone. It, it was coming, and it wasn't supposed to get to Boone until, I think, till about 10 or 11. I remember. It was probably it about was, 8.30 or so. I looked out to the, I just looked into 3 and 4, see light and there was just this big light right over the power, right? I'm like, what time we get Whoa. done? Like a little after 9, 9.30? Yeah. Yeah, about 9.32. I, I left the racetrack at 10.30, and it was starting to sprinkle. Yeah, yeah it was, it, it's about time I left, too. When I left. What was neat at Dodge City, they actually had to adjust the time of the races to try to play the wind a little bit, but that's what a good promoter will do. A good promoter will take the, the information that's available and adjust the program around once again, to make sure they get the races in and the racers aren't left high and dry without getting paid and, and stuff like that. And Kyler did a great job of that down in Dodge City. I mean, we all have we all have the our cell phones. The racers all have cell phones. Everybody has cell phones. Everybody sees about the same thing these days. It's yeah. not like the old days. And we've talked about this before when, when everybody sees weather coming, whether it be before races, especially these days. I think, oh, yes. I think yes. the forecast yes. definitely right. will prevent participation i think the racers say ah, i'm not going to go to that if it's going to wash out because at the end of the day they want to they don't want to waste their money getting there they don't waste their time being there and they don't want to go home without being paid if they are there so you know again it it, it takes it, it's a balancing act some people do it really really well you know yeah. i i think that i think that we know who some of those people are racetracks that may, you know obviously we have some examples from last weekend of people who did it really well i think um Obviously, Tyler uh, at uh, Kyler at, at Dodge City did that. Yep. Um, and you have examples of tracks that didn't do that, didn't manage it very well. Thankfully, we just didn't sanction those events. So correct. Or with the car counts too over the weekend at the Frostbusters, and I, I, I'm going to compliment you too. I mean, you had some snafus during the show with a rollover, with two hobby stocks getting stuck together, an ambulance call to the pits. A lot of calls or a lot of cars, but still very well run shows all three nights. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if it's Friday night. To get out of Boone at 9, mm-hmm. 930 is a little good. Yeah, yeah with a couple hundred cars. cars. 189, 188 yeah. cars. So, yeah. yeah. Just you know, shy, I mean, you look, you look at Boone, 200. you know, throw a couple throw a couple track prep sessions in. I mean, it, right. so we started at 5 o'clock, and we're done at like 932 yep. or whatever. At Marshalltown, we started at 737. We're done at 1234. I mean, both programs just under with, you know, the huge car counts just – Done under five hours. Yeah, Marshall yeah. ran compact. Compacts. Yeah, we had compacts. Friday. Had about forty of them. Had a good great. Thirty eight. That was that was pretty uh, a great turnout. That's about compacts. forty. And yeah. I and I ate my weight in free food Friday night at Marshall's. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, oh. If you didn't if you didn't turn a profit in the concession stand, I'll, I'll single handedly I own up to that. Okay. <laughs> Can you pay me for that tender line? That <laughs> I think I was on the road at ten o'clock at Stewart on the way home. Oh yeah, that's right, you had one. But yeah, we had. I saw some guys from out of state at the Frostbuster at Boone. Um, again, we had racers come from 
different parts of the country and Canada. We had some what did we lawns. have? Like thirteen states. I know on at, Thursday night we did. Yeah, and, and one Providence. Right. One then, Canadian Providence. I think I think we were right at thirteen to fifteen different yeah, it states. Was, it did, it didn't get lower as the weekend went on. No. For sure. Crazy. No. I, I just I always find it fascinating. Uh, I raced it all, although it wasn't that good at it. And I, I admit I raced and I I'd pulled my car. The farthest I ever pulled my race car was to Davenport from here, which is what two hours. Yeah. You know, two hours down there and two hours back, and and it just to me I I am we drive. You guys drive. Jim drives all over the place. Um, I drive when most of the time we, most of us are driving to races, you know, and we're not pulling race cars. No. And it's not in the wind or anything like that. You know, I just, it, it was I, just Saturday. Continue, I continue to be fascinated at the dedication that racers uh, have to, to, to race anywhere uh, that's a distance from their house. Right. I mean, it, it's, it is truly dedication to do that. You know, you get, you, you've got to have the travel plans. You got to make arrangements from work. We talked about you the guys out on the West on coast. On. You've got to yeah. plan. You race for a weekend. You'll go. And race the same track all weekend, yeah. and it's four, five, six hours from home. That's yeah. People yeah. like here in the Midwest, they think, "Well, we got to plan for these specials. We got to plan for this race. We got to." People on the West Coast have to plan for their their weekly racing, right. where the well, hell they're going to make it, right. and where they're going to stay for just their weekly programs because they're anywhere from four to eight hours apart, depending on where you're at. And what what did we have? What was the longest tow for the Frostbusters? Can somebody look that up? Ryan, I I don't have the mileage or anything here. I would think it would have to be. Yeah, it'd be it has to be Lawrence. It's Lawrence O'Connor, wouldn't it? Yeah, I mean, it has where's to be. where's he from? Let me... British Columbia. He's from Port Hardy, Port British Hardy. Columbia, Canada. Yeah, would he be farther than I? I guess I don't know what way he came to get here, but it's a way. We had well, guys from I mean, California. We he had... came from Missouri, but I mean, he yeah, yeah, yeah but I mean, because still... he he's been kind of racing the whole circuit, you know. Right. The, Winter Nationals, Clash on the Coast, Frostbusters, and that went home. Well, I mean, Sir Lawrence is, for those that don't know, I mean, he's he's in the construction business, right? Yes. He's, in, he's into bridge building and a variety. He's into of a lot of things. Relative <laughs> things. I had specifically asked him because of the project we got going on there, you know, we, we have concerns as to, you know, how are we going to get fans from one racetrack to the other at Boone, right? And so that is so crazy that you guys were able to cover that up so fast. And it looked just he like he showed up and, and people started asking questions why it was there. And, you know, I just wanted to let everybody know, you know, I mean, when you're, it's not, it's, it's not easy. It's not going to be an easy task getting people from, you know, Boone one to Boone two, and we have all the camping and in the, in, in all yeah. the cars. And Lawrence so told me you were talking about been, like some the, the, a couple skywalks or something. Well, we for a while we talked about a high speed rail, an underground. Oh, one. like it, like when you go to, to DFW and you ride the yeah. thing around. Yeah, the tram. We, we had we had the overhead. We we talked about overhead. What for about a, a subway? While. Then we talked about an underground subway. No way. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so, I think that's the way to go. It was go. good to have Sir Lawrence there to talk about that, you know, and, and he was offering some input. The Sultans. He thought, yeah, what, you know, what he thought we should do. Ryan, if you don't want to ride it's on the subway or the tram, I will, uh, I'll carry you on my shoulders <laughs> Ryan's like normal. Out, <laughs> Ryan's getting out the moonshine. Don't think I'm not either. <laughs> I didn't know that, that thing was open. You taking another what, shot, Ryan? Boone 2 or Boone 1? What are you talking about? No, Boone 1 was open because we were there, but I just can't believe – how quickly you got it covered up so people couldn't see yeah, all the stuff that was happening. Inc incre it's incre it's an incredibly stealth project. We are stealth using we are sticks. using technology from the military. No way. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Let's military technology to cover it all up. It, it is it's like it's go like a 3D missile, printer. It's, it's like the nuclear missile silos that you don't even know are there in Kansas and Nebraska and shit like that. Right, you just drive right by, and it looks like a cornfield. Next thing you know, they just well, they oh, just, it's kind of like just, Watergate. It looked like just a normal hotel they just, until they, they found they, out. They push a button, and it all just goes away, and out pop the missiles. Whoa. That's what it's like at Boone right now. Yep. Just push a button, and it all goes away. So that's what those push stakes were back. for along the driveway when you drove. Correct. And there sits okay. Boone too. It is there. People just aren't looking hard enough. And you know, one of the the, the great things about Boone too is a retractable roof that should help us with the rain. Correct. And uh, 
Well, we I, I've been consulting with Jerry Jones and AT and T Stadium with that. That's why I go to Texas usually is I sit down and have lunch with Jerry. Wow, this is all amazing and information. Pull, pull, the tr- pull the track out, and you know right. we can reconfigure the How track the just like on the. What? How was the, the shot rails? to the throat there? <laughs> it was weak. Burned. It was weak. <laughs> it was weak. It was weak. Uh, Good times. Sorry so to hear anyway, that. Uh, wow. What else are we going to talk about? Well, we did have some racing in the past week. You know, we had uh, Batesville, yeah. which I, I thought was interesting. There were some highlights of that where uh, we had a little Taylor on Taylor crime, I should say. Yeah. Where, uh, <laughs> That dirty Taylor. <laughs> I wonder, best. you know, that, that's got to be interesting for Connie up in the booth. Do they disqualify him? Do they ground him? Or how, how do they handle a situation like I, that? I really think what happens is they have to just worry about how Sunday dinner is going to be. Christmas. Christmas, Thanksgiving, Easter. It's all got it's it's to be good by the time you get to Christmas. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I mean, yes. it, yeah, this did happen on Easter weekend. The Easter egg hunt could have been affected. <laughs> it's not the first time we've had something like that happen i think the the most memorable one had to be the super nationals so who took out who larson on larson i think well who was that ryan jeff took out peyton no no, no, no i'm talking, talking about the super nationals, super nationals. Oh. Oh. dustin super took nationals. out jeffrey yeah but they were both still on the stage <laughs> Yeah, yeah still, Jim was on the stage. They still too. finished on the podium. <laughs> what happened in Batesville? Did any, did they both finish on the podium still? No, I think I don't think uh, if I remember right. I don't think Peyton finished. Did he? I don't know. I'd have to go back and watch the replay. So who took out who? Peyton took out Jeff. Well, I mean, they just I think, ruffled. I think up. Jeff took out Jeff took out Peyton. He I just believe. meant to ruffle him up a little Jeff bit. He just Peyton. meant to rattle his cage. Just meant to rattle his cage. You know, been fast, you know what we ought to do is maybe one of these days, producer Nate can pull that up and we can have you make the call. We could. Hmm. Wouldn't that be fun? Yeah. There's a video and there's a video right now circulating Facebook in Arizona that people want us to make a call on. We should just put that on our <laughs> Facebook page. If you were IMCA, what would you do? <laughs> We have these moments. People think that people think <laughs> there that they, are there are moments in life that make you are. ponder things. Ryan and Jim uh, and Dave and me and we have these moments where we're like Oh, oh God, oh, don't remind me. What would you do? What should we do? People think I like writing letters and I really don't. You're just, <laughs> just like really, signing I really them. Don't. I do, so I have to make sure the yes. signature is good. Sure you're just oh, the nope, messenger. Throw it one away. At that yeah. point, Ryan, you're just the messenger. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so you're like you're like the old grandpa in stroke. Well, race. you know, you so do what I do. do like, if I get the calls. Right. So, so for the record, I, Ryan really doesn't make the calls. We discuss it as a group usually in some of these situations. But at the end of the day, Ryan isn't the person that makes the calls. Well, that you, depends. Sometimes I have to tell racers, you got to be shitting me. Ryan did what? <laughs> <laughs> Holy crap. You better we put that no, on Facebook so everybody sees what he screwed uh, yeah. up. We we'll have to no talk idea. to Ryan about that. Yeah. We had no idea Ryan was going to make that decision. What yeah. a dick. What the I hell never, was he thinking? Never would have done that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ryan's still collecting fine money from the Super National Sport Compact. <laughs> Holy cow. It's been a, it's been a busy week. Uh, yeah. It has been. I don't know. We had like a record. I think we had, had nine like nine, nine sport compacts at Super Nationals that had illegal engines. Yeah. A few of them nine paid of them. last year. And Yes, and they're still. I've heard from a few this week. They're trickling in. Week. They're ready to race again. Oh, yeah, because it's racing time. I want to race. I better pay this letter. Where's that damn letter Ryan sent me? It's probably in, on Facebook in, in, in all reality, I mean, there are stressful decisions that we have to make. It's not like we enjoy finding people, contrary to what, what might be said on Facebook. And, again, we laugh about it a little bit. We have to find some humor in some of the stuff that we get pulled into at IMCA. Because if, if you don't find the humor in it, if you don't find the, you know, if, if you deal in the negativity all the time and the angry people all the time, it gets very stressful. Ryan and I have talked about this. I worry mm-hmm. a little bit about him having to deal with that stuff constantly because he does send the letters. So they're the, you know, they're the, he's the person that they usually reach back out Which to. Which is fine. Can it's I not really Ryan his, Clark, please? It's not really his fault. And it's not at the end of the day, you know, we, you know. Hey, but he did when he took over the executive secretary position. He knew these shoulders were going to have to be 
if you go back, I can be a little bitch too. Jerry. No, I know. <laughs> Again, if you go back, if if you go back, oh, 15 years or so, we didn't really have automatic penalties. We literally made those decisions kind of like just on a per case basis. And the bigger that we've gotten, the more racers that we deal with, the more divisions we deal with and stuff like that, the automatic penalties have really cleaned up a lot of those decisions for us. And and they, they take some of the stress, so to speak, of the situations out of out of the decisions that we have to make um, a lot of times. You yeah, know, the rule get, book dictates what the penalty yeah, will be. A lot of yeah. times people it's will easier. call and it say, says right here. What do you what are you gonna do? You know, and, and a lot of the, I, I send people to the automatic um, penalties quite a bit you know and and we fall back on them people sometimes disagree with that people's people sometimes think that they're they're too they're too heavy or or they're too severe some people think they're not enough sometimes we we adjust a little bit you know depends on the severity of a given situation they all have to be taken at face value yeah yeah i mean but what we what we do appreciate is you know when we get comments on facebook you know supporting us and and stuff like that. We we really like that. And you know, when whenever you guys on Facebook can jump in and give us a hand on these <laughs> tough decisions, whether they be <laughs> rules or whatever, you know, keep them coming, please. I think Cody Williams did that for us last week, Who? didn't he? Cody Williams. <laughs> I like Cody. I, we, and I Loaf. do too. Loaf. Again, Loaf. I mean, he, he, at the end of the day, you know, everybody has everybody. What's that? Everybody has their opinion at the end of the day. And whatever it is, whether how we handle penalties or what rule decisions we make or whatnot, you know, and we had a situation that presented itself a week or so ago uh, with the hobby stock division with with offset rear ends, you know, and, and you know, we, 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 we did make a slight adjustment in the rules from last year's rule book to this year's rule book. Uh, we made an adjustment. It was what we would call a, a, a clarification, but we didn't change the rule. It was really... We get calls all the time. Dave does. Dave gets most of these calls and asks questions. And when we get the calls consistently, it's like, okay, do we have that word used correctly? Is the is the is a sentence worded correctly? Does it say kind of what we mean? Because uh, you get people that get a little confused by that. And and we had that happen with our hobby stocks and centered rear ends and our hobby stocks and what what we consider to be a centered rear end. And so we we added, I think, the word centered in in chassis or centered in car um to 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 clarify that because people were a little confused and that got poor that got put back on us as a rule change and 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 again it wasn't a rule change in our opinion and it wasn't one that we didn't think most of our racers were already following you know and and it popped up quick quickly this year where we had some 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 cars that had you know offset rear ends in the car by their interpretation they felt that they were legal by our interpretation they weren't so David addressed that, and, and Cody was involved with that. And again, you know, that, that's that. He, you know, we don't we don't make we try not to, to take it personally, and we try not to make it personal when we have situations like this pop up. But we don't change rules uh, at, at for gotcha moments with racers. We just are never going to do that. You know, what about this, our what about our alternative rules? Do they pretty much stay the same? The alternative rules, can you you make those up as you go? Okay. Yeah, we don't use our alternative rules too much at sanctioned events. No. You know, I, I'm going to say one thing. You know, we, we talked about Cody Williams. That son of a bitch is a racer. So I'm at Stewart on Thursday. I figured he was traveling with you. Yeah, I figured you guys were like. <laughs> You're riding with him. I, I, I figured he had a fresh 9 by 13 pan of meatloaf right there for you when he got to the track. I had meatloaf last night, and I'll probably have it for lunch. But I, uh, Ooh, he's sandwich. at Stewart. On, he lives in what? Minneapolis, Kansas. Jim lets it loaf a lot. So he drives to Stewart Which is Thursday by Salina. night. For those that don't know where Minneapolis is, is that's right by Salina. It's, yeah. by it's Saint not Paul, by St. Right? Paul. It's by St. Paul. Oh, no. <laughs> I had to think about that. Albert Lee. Second of my yeah, Albert yeah, Lee. yeah, yeah. It's a tr- the is Twin that the Cities of Minneapolis. St. <laughs> Minne- Paul, Kansas. What are you talking yeah, about? Say, yeah, there's the, there's the uh, Twin Cities Maybe of Kansas, Minneapolis, and Salina. Anyway, he's from, he's from basically Salina, Kansas. Drives to Stewart, Iowa to race Thursday. Then he's in Dodge City racing Friday. Yeah. That's a long way. That's that's okay. dedication. Then he's it, coming it back. Truly, that, truly is. Then he's coming back up here Thursday with, and Friday. With, with a legal yeah. with a legal race car too to boot, yeah. you know, in the situation that Prent has presented itself the weekend before. So again, uh, you know, we, we posted I posted a response to something that Cody had posted on Facebook and I don't 
Dave doesn't ne- necessarily do that, and we don't necessarily do that. But I posted that just because it, it, what he had posted really did create uh, calls for Dave and created more confusion. So I felt it was best just to kind of to address what our position was. And Cody fixed his car, um, or at least he said he did. I think he said he changed the rear end, so he must not have been legal, yeah. even though it wasn't disqualified, even though he wasn't disqualified the week before. Um, Dave, Dave had, he kind of said, hey, you know, everybody, you know, Cody had asked, he had mentioned it. You know, it's one of those situations. And Cody, Cody fixed his car, shows up in Stewart, shows up in Dodge City the next weekend. Races a lot the of next day. Inside, so I don't want to let Cody. We, I don't want to let Cody to think that we were um, necessarily um, trying to shit on him because we weren't. Nope. Nope. We appreciate that type of dedication. Yeah. I just said that earlier. I can't imagine pulling a race car that far, especially in the wind. Yeah. One direction all the way back the other direction. Did he win Crazy. anything? Did he he won. Yeah. Didn't he yeah. win out there? There you go. <laughs> I think he won Dodge. Didn't he win Dodge? Yeah, it was Dodge City he won. He won the track championship there last year, didn't he? I believe so. And Kansas State, Kansas State champion. champion. Mm-hmm. He knows what he's doing. Yep. He's a nice guy. Yeah. He's a nice guy. He comes to our banquet. You know, again, I don't, I don't have anything bad to say about Cody. I nope. still want to figure out where they got the nickname Meat Little Fat. We should have had him on. Because he doesn't. Because if I, I remember right, he told yeah. me he doesn't really like me. We don't think we don't think ahead fast enough. We should really write this shit down. Yeah, we people. planned this podcast at like 4 o'clock yesterday. I know. We walk yeah. in. Hey, what are we going <laughs> to talk about today? That's about the extent. Yeah, we'll have to start getting our guests back on. Yeah. Well, yeah. we got we to find good. people that want to join us. I mean. I called my mom. My mom is in town. Yeah, you know, she was smart woman. Not she was to not in town. You last called her. She didn't answer. Yeah, last time we t- on her birthday, she was not in town. We talked about a little bit about her. She's in in town for a couple of weeks, and I'm like, "Hey, you want to do a podcast?" And she goes, "You know, I don't like that stuff, Brett." I'm like, "Yeah, I know." So I called her this morning. She didn't answer her phone. Went to voicemail. I think she did it to me on purpose. Oh, duh! I mean, you're and then I just texted her while we were sitting here. Hey, if you because she, she's just right over here. She's not far from here. <laughs> I can't. Like, hey, if you want to come be on the podcast, she come did, over is to the, she the Barn Dominium. Yeah, she's over at the Barn Dominium. Should have just moved the podcast remotely to the Barn Dominium. Yeah, then you get my dad involved. Oh, oh no, yeah, that, that would be a ratings better. coup right Whoa. there. That would be the biggest. If we could have Carlton, you know, the, if we'd the had Carlton you... on, this right here would be gone. Carlton's I corner, know. and our, and the uh, words we can't say would be out the window. <laughs> yes, oh, it yeah. would. We would have to There's put a, the all explicit. kinds of words in my dad's vocabulary that would not fit into our podcast. He says <laughs> it would them be regularly. Great. But anyhow, yeah. the The other day he came over. We watched the Iowa game. We didn't talk about any of that. We watched the my parents came for both the Final Four game and then the championship came to my house and we watched the game and my dad's like you got any doers and I'm like yeah dad I got doers for you I get it out and he's like oh it's the wrong doers I don't drink that no more I drink white label <laughs> I'm like, what the hell is that with white label doers white I don't even know what that did is. you go get some then no I had a Texas I had a Texas fifth what was that's what you call yeah, it yeah right? the big handle yes a big one of regular doers yeah, I, did he drink it. Because every time he comes to my house, you got doers. And I'm like, you know, and I, I was down to where I had very little. So I bought a big bottle of it, even though he don't ever come back. You know, it's just, you know I think I might have well, had left over. Well, if he had the, the right doers, maybe. he might come back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, correct. It's, yeah, it's, the it's, white label. White label. Oh, man, I don't even know what that is. So, but the biggest question is, did he drink the non-white label doers? Of course he did. Oh, exactly. <laughs> yeah. You know, and the Hawkeyes lost. Would, a good son would have game. went and got the right stuff. Okay, Jim, whatever. <laughs> we we sat and watched the Final Four game. I think we had Casey's Pizza the first night. Was that Friday night? Yeah. Yeah, Friday Have night. Have you had the thin, cu- thin hey, we, crust? We, 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 watched, we watched the Iowa women's game Friday night, too. <laughs> the race track. <laughs> oh, yeah, I yeah, stayed we had, home. We, yeah, yeah, you stayed I home that night. It was warmer at my house. Yeah, I had and it was. My, I texted you. I said, hey, somebody promised me they were going to be here tonight. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm a home. It's cold. So yeah, since when am I not good enough for you? Well, you're always good enough for me, but just sometimes but, he says he's going to do things and then doesn't follow yeah. through. Here's the thing. I, I see my dad usually maybe twice a year. Okay. I'll I have not it, seen yeah. him since August 4th of last year. Dad, Jerry. Dad, Jerry. Yeah, Jerry. So he's in town. He wanted to watch the Iowa game. I'm like, yeah. I'll just Brett, Carlton, dad. Brett. So Carl. my dad watched the Iowa game. And ate a thin crust Casey's pizza. They are pretty good. Is they, that new? They, yeah. Yes. Yeah. They just, I saw an ad for it. I'm like, thin crust. They've been crust. out for about five, four or five months. Right. But, but what's, I mean, 
How thin is it? They, it's, I mean, it's good. It's a, so I by mean, far the it, best it, pizza it's they cr- make. I mean, they do have. I, a, I mean, the, the regular pizza is a it's little not. thinner crust, but it's thin and crispy. It's thin this and is it, thin and crispy. This is thin and crispy. You know what it reminded me? It reminded me of jo- Jolly's Pizza for those okay. who live in this area. It, it, it's they cut around. it differently and everything. Oh right? yeah, it's in the squares. Like it's in the squares. Yeah. So it, that's it, how they do it at Casey's too. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's. It's. I was like, this is so good. Try it out. It's good. Thin crust Casey's Pizza. And a crispy. Yep. What what toppings? Yeah, what would you get for You that? like the sausage from Casey's, don't you? That's what <laughs> I like. <laughs> yeah. Shut up, Jerry. <laughs> Shut so up, Jim. Oh, you want to say the word now. <laughs> no. I'm, just, I'm gonna walk no, he likes, he likes the Casey's <laughs> sausage I'm gonna, pizza. I'm going to walk myself into a meme. <laughs> Yeah, I really like sausage. <laughs> pizza. It's always, about, like pizza. <laughs> it's always about dick with you, isn't it? <laughs> oh. Sausage, mush- mushroom, Why does it always and have to be about the D sausage at the... Oh, actually, it was sausage, mushroom, and black olives, I think. Ooh, that I is had. a good combination, actually. Did you put... Sometimes... Okay, onion. now here's... Uh, this, 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 this is the it's question the, of the day. It's the best. Pineapple or vanilla pineapple? Pineapple on a pizza. Yes or no? I've never ate it. True story. That's how I, you know, I, 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 I say hate no. to say this being from Rome, New York, which is Italian food galore. I have had pineapple on pizza and it's not bad. Oh, I love it. I've had Italian it before, sausage, but, oh, cup pepperoni, never tried and pineapple. Yes. Just, I've had it and it's not bad. I just don't prefer something sweet on my pizza. It just seems, I don't know. It's, not my it's just not my thing. Oh, man. but to each their own. I remember my dad, my dad, we'd always, it was, it was, uh, Canadian bacon and pineapple. Yeah, that was always. Oh, just, I, yeah. yeah, I'll get in the mood for it every once in a while. Just, just a good old. So you had Canadian, ham and pineapple. You had luau. Yeah, what else we talk it's, about? It's got, it's got to be Domino's for me to get pineapple on pizza. It's got to come from. Yeah, Domino's. but Domino's doesn't put enough on. I don't really like Domino's pizza. Well, I like their thin, thin and crispy is good. Now, if I go to my our go to Mama's Pizza place. It's cup pepperoni and Italian sausage only. Is that in Omaha? Yeah. Mm. I'm hungry. Or if we go to Lyle's, it's prosciutto pizza. It's making now you're talking. I had to talk I'm hungry now. 1030 and I want to go get a pizza. <laughs> what else are we going to talk about? Talk about well, we eclipse. talked about lunch. And you didn't talk about, were you going to talk about the Iowa women? Oh, we, we didn't you, really I didn't know you brought those. that up. I didn't know. Well, I mean, they talked about the game. I mean, it was a hell of a lot better than the men's game last night. Yeah. Was, oh, man. The women's tournament was better than the men's tournament. Yes. I I, yeah, I would agree. I don't think I watched a single men's game the whole tournament. I, I didn't watch some last night. On, but. Yeah, I watched some. I didn't see last night, but I watched a little last night. I don't know. I don't know what it is. Something about the men's basketball for me personally. You know, it's you grow, you grow up with during, you know, Magic Johnson and Michael Jordan and just that era of basketball to me the the, the the where the where basketball is right now the current form of the NBA in my opinion is just not as good as it used to be I just don't like it as much to me, just me to to me there is no basketball after college level there's no basketball basketball yeah. stops being played at the collegiate level once it gets to the NBA it's just a show I think it takes five steps you know, five steps is not a travel seat. it's yeah the officiating takes a back seat to the the stars and the names and I think when you have point. a league that's filled full of people like Zach, is it Zach Eady is that his name oh Heidi? yeah I mean Edie? he can he didn't have to yeah. jump to dunk the ball yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. you know I mean to, what, what Shouldn't they raise the basket for people like that? Shouldn't they have like a, a basket that just goes? Up so once the once so. the basket recognizes it's, Zach Eady is in the paint, it automatically yeah. goes up like three. I feet. mean, we're, listen, why not? We're smart enough as a, a, a technology, right? You put it in the ball, and you and it talks to the rim, and so that way, yeah. and that yeah, way, it's AI. That way, every player, every single player has the same. You know, the tall guy yeah. doesn't have an advantage. That's very the, socialist mm-hmm. of you, Brett. I, I, I appreciate that. It just kind of like it kind of <laughs> it kind of. Equ- evens it all out because exactly. I, because well, just I, look, I, at, hey, you know, look at the thing Iowa, about it though. Look at the Iowa women's championship game. That gal, that Cordoza girl, was six seven. Right. She didn't have to hardly jump off the ground. And the Iowa players are down there, you know, yeah. Yeah, but look trying at, to grab the ball. But look at grabs the rebound and shoots it back in. She had like seventeen rebounds in the first two seconds of the game. But look at Edie, he lost. 
I mean, there were there were four or five, six UConn's teams this year. UConn's got a really good big guy too, though. Right. But yeah. I mean, there's four or five or six teams that beat Purdue this year that were able to outplay Edie or shut him down. Hell, I mean, Nebraska beat Purdue. Yeah, that's, that's very <laughs> exactly. true. Nebraska won a game this year in college? They have the National Coach of the Year. Yeah. Yeah. They Brent went to Hoiberg. a tournament. You know, you talk about that AI, yeah. that AI yeah. stuff with the ball and the hoop. I mean, yeah. you didn't know when we were talking about Boone 2 and all the stuff. You didn't mention the AI on the track prep. Okay. That's being, yeah, that's being. Uh, We've got some pretty serious yeah. technology. Being I know things you don't know. <laughs> what? I, there are some things I know that you don't know. I give credit to Carson. Carson is really, really, really super technologically advanced. Tech, techno Carson. Techno, techno Carson. Carson. <laughs> we call him Techno Carson. <laughs> yep. He, he's he's light years ahead of Jim. You know, he's half my age almost. He's definitely half Jim's age. So everybody's know. half Jim's age. You bring in those younger younger people that have a different different perspective. And Carson does a really good job with all that stuff here behind the scenes at IMCA. We were talking about it today, this morning in our meeting. Yeah. And AI implementation and, and you know how we incorporate that into the the new racetrack over there is has been pretty pretty cool to see. Yes. Cloning. It's a big piece of it. Cloning. It's, I, I heard I heard we also made some leaps on cloning. We have? Mm-hmm. Racetracks or, or sheep? Mm, people. People. I have I was fed some information about some people that are going to be cloned. You'll forever, so, okay, you'll forever so if you're, be my it, dolly the sheep, though. <laughs> oh, thank you. Nah. If, if you had the opportunity to clone Ooh, this, one person. Oh, boy. Either... I don't know. You could go living and 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 dead. You could you could pick like. Oh, this would be tough. Well, clone one person. If you could cologne a person right now. Cologne? If you could cologne. If you could cologne. Only one, only one if you could ribbon. cologne someone who is just a, a ribbon. ribbon. <laughs> would it be a sausage? <laughs> or a pepperoni? <laughs> <laughs> Ryan? Uh, I'll defer to the expert. Uh, yes. uh, Any kind of meat's cologne. okay by me. <laughs> Generative AI. Yeah, I, think I don't know who I would clone. I don't know who I would clone either. And there are a lot of people I know I wouldn't clone, including you hear myself. stuff like like Walt Disney, like is in the cryo chamber. You hear stuff like that. Have you ever read something? Mm-hmm. Like yeah, that? the Golden yeah. Girls had their heads frozen, or their heads frozen. <laughs> they did. <laughs> the Golden Girls in, in a dream in a dream sequence. On the oh, you said they had frozen head. <laughs> so yeah, clone, you you Saturday clone Night for Ryan. <laughs> Be interesting. Would it be somebody you know, somebody you don't know? Yeah, I don't know. You know, but it has so to be weird. somebody that's living because you couldn't clone a dead person. I don't think. Correct. Does that have to or be you'd end up with another dead person. Possibly. Possibly. Probably. That would require some thought, man. That I'd, have to, give, I'd have to give that time. Yeah, comment below. Yeah, comment below. Got, if we all got clone? really quiet. We were thinking. Yeah. How yeah. long have we been talking for? Half hour. About forty five. Yeah, it? about forty. Yeah, 42, 42. It, it hasn't. What felt, else we talk about? Hasn't felt like three days yet. Oh, well, we got some Clone races it. coming up. I was gonna say cloning brought too much. Oh, science. hey, I want to. We we forgot to hit on this last week or last podcast. Um, you know this this weekend this Saturday. Um, you know everybody knows uh, the retired checks that used to promote that were part owner one forty one. You know they lost their daughter back in an, in an accident, and her celebration of life is this Saturday. And um, yep. you know our our thoughts go out with them. I mean, I I made the, we were before the last podcast. I went up spent seen them for the weekend, and um, just great people. And it just uh, Gertie was so. Gertie was awesome. She was a great gal. I mean, she was one of those people that would lighten a room and. Um, rock the stage at the Super yeah, rock the stage That's the She was the DJ. Yeah, she was yeah. the DJ, and she had the limbo ready to go this year or last oh, year. Really? She had yeah. a sign there that uh, they sent us a video too. But uh, yeah, that celebration of life is Saturday up in Luxor in the Luxembourg area. So JW's place and where is it? Casco, 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 yeah, Casco. Yeah, Casco. Casco. So yep, starts at one o'clock Saturday. So you can go there and then go to the races afterwards. Yep, that's why they did it that way because they wanted, which to, is what she would expect you to yeah, do. Anyway. Exactly. Yeah. What I'm gonna do? Yeah, Jim's going uh, to Wisconsin. Yeah, I was unaware I mean, she had CF, yeah. cystic fibrosis. Yeah, and that, it, she had two or three good stouts that almost she didn't make it through. Yeah. So uh, my my wife's family we have we have she, my wife has a niece that has CF, and so it's a very challenging thing to live with. Mm-hmm. 
you know. And so, you know, I, I, did, I did not know that. You know? Well, that's like, you know. And, and, and the reason I bring that up is because they're asking if, if you donate to the memorial at all to donate to the Cystic Fibrosis, fibrosis, cystic fibrosis yeah. Foundation. Sorry, my words. No, that's okay. okay. Well, that's like a lot, you know, like a lot of people like, Tra- like Tracy that, uh, from Saints Avenue that he, uh, yeah, he, he's dealt, he dealt with it all. Well, him he and him and his, transplant. yeah, he had a double lung transplant and that's, and his brothers also had it. Yeah. And right. he, one of his brothers did pass from it, uh, here probably two, three years ago. So, yeah, it's, it's where you have to have two, two, two <clears throat> carriers that both parents have to be carriers of, yeah. of the CF, um, gene. And then, you know, when, when they are. Um, the odds, the, the, yeah. sti- the statistically go up quite con- substantially. Because it's one of those that for, can skip a generation. Any, yeah, for any um, child that were to be born in that situation. So. Yeah, disregard, a, to, disregard the text, Jerry. Yep. So... Yeah, but yeah, so. if 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 you if you can make it up to yeah, if you're to, up in that area, the celebration, you know, please stop by. You know, obviously, yep. if you can't, you want to donate, please donate to the on her behalf to yeah. the Cystic Fibrosis Brosis Foundation. So that was for a, a good you cause. know, then and the, the Cystic Fibrosis they have a thing called Sixty Five Roses, a lot of celebrations, and Becca was part of some of those. And um, we were that weekend, we were looking, we were looking. There was a book; it was called Sixty Five Roses. And the lady that wrote this book, her child had cystic fibrosis. Well, she was one that was trying to get money for research and do this. And every, you know, I, I think it was, I think it was her daughter was like, uh, you know, four or five years old. And all she heard was cystic fibrosis. And she thought her mom was saying 65 roses. Oh. I'm looking for 60, help with 65 roses instead of cystic fibrosis. So that's where that. I you never know, yeah, it, and, and I didn't huh. realize that till I till this. It's a it's a children's book that Becca had, and it was from one of her, you know, nurses or doctors when she was a small child. Because, like they said, you know, from the time she was born, they I mean they knew right away, and it went. It just was handling that, and I thought that was a because I always wonder because Jackie is you know with the Des Moines cystic fibrosis, she's MCs their events every year, and it's called the Sixty Five Roses. Never knew why, but then. Now you know. Now you, now you know. So it's it's crazy. I never knew that. No. Yeah. No. Oops. Didn't mean to kick the table there. Sorry. Didn't mean to wake you up. No, I'm working. Oh, okay. Okay. We're podcasting. Why are you working? I'm just looking at my email. Oh, okay. Can I do that? Nope. Upcoming races. What do we got for upcoming races this weekend? Ah, uh, well, nothing going on at Marshalltown, I don't think. No, there's not. I mean, nothing there this week. I mean, only five grand to win for stock cars. Is it gonna King be of the high bank. Um, yes, it's supposed to be in the mid to high 60s every day. So I heard 83. I'll go with that, too. <laughs> <laughs> no, so we'll have, um, yeah, full programs of... Uh, all the IMCA divisions, mod lights, stock cars. I think I came to that race last year. Yes, did you did. did. Jim's coming on Friday. I am I unable to make it this year. So what are you doing? Double heat race qualifying? Or how yeah, we'll do the yeah, and that's actually this year instead of doing in the second one racing the cars you raced in the first one. Uh, our friends from my race pass have come up with a. They created it last year to where you can race different cars, and it just automatically calculates it. So. It's kind of a neat little format. We'll lock ten in and then run some last chance. Kind of like every, kind Thursday of like they do. Friday. It. Yeah, Thursday and Friday. Got yep. a Wednesday practice. Fair enough. Yeah, that's well, what I say. Five thousand to win well. stock cars. Five thousand to win. Five hundred to start. Thirty-five dollar pit pass. It's each a big night. purse. One twenty-five. Sponsor for that? Fee. Yeah, our friends at Drury Automotive and. Uh, there you go. You know they're also great racers. I mean, Kelly Drury, which was Kelly Schmidt. You know, her dad, Joe Schmidt, raced IMCA. Who's years. Kelly's husband? Uh, he's your best friend, Daniel Drury. That's what he tells me anyway. Yeah. And his dad <laughs> raced IMCA. I mean, back in the old Greenbelt Speedway days up yep. there in Eldora, you know, his dad raced IMCA for years. And Think of all the people like the Drury's. So think yeah. of all the people out there in racing that are that are putting money into purses for special events or just weekly shows or billboards at racetracks. Yeah. Think of the the... 
you want to talk about some serious money. Think of the the incredibly large amount of money that people just put into racing. We're not talking about equipment that they're buying and racing, you know, you know, race cars themselves or anything that the racers are buying, but just all the people who support racing. Well, you know, in the, like this millions, deal, yeah, millions I mean, of dollars. The, I mean, he they every just, year they called and said we'd like to do this, and it's cool. I mean, thank you know, yeah. I mean, they're adding yep. five, they've they've added five thousand just to the purse to make it to yep. be that five hundred to start. You know, each position from third on back. Yep. From last year, if you were there, it pays an extra two hundred bucks because of them, and they're and and they're racing in it too. And they race weekly, and so it's it's cool to see racers yeah. that are that have been you know successful in business that can, are able to give back, yeah, to their to their peers. There's a lot of people that do. That's kind of my point, you know. There's a lot of people across the United States that put money into racing facilities and events and special events and things like that that probably don't get near enough credit. Yeah, that's like what like when we're announcing, you know, we always tell look at look at the names around the racetrack, the names on the cars. Yeah. Go support them and tell them, hey, I saw your name at the racetrack. That's why I'm here. Thanks. Spend yeah, you, some money with them and tell them you saw their name because if you that's the biggest thing. If if you don't tell them where you saw their name, they have no idea. But if you say, hey, I was at the races on Friday, Saturday, or Sunday, and I saw you had a sign at the racetrack, that's why I stopped in and spent hundred bucks with you. I have had more than one promoter. Um, over the years tell me that, you know, the sponsorships that they sell for the racetrack, the billboards, the nightly sponsors, you know, anything that they're doing uh, from an advertising standpoint with local businesses or even just, you know, uh, racers who have businesses, that that money, you know, is how vital it is, how it gets, mm-hmm. gets their season started, how it gets their insurance paid, it gets their, you know, it gets all the utilities and stuff going. It just it just gets things going. And then a lot of racetracks that do it really well, they're very fortunate to use that money as operating expenses too throughout yeah. the year. Because look back at last weekend, you know, and you, 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 even the people that are at home who are enjoying it from home, you know, where it's nice and warm and, and on you know, IMCA TV, on IMCA TV, and they're not, they're not, you know, eating dust or getting wind blown at them or freezing outside. Yeah. Um, you know, there, there are people that are, that are, you know, that are at the racetrack, mm-hmm. but when you have conditions like last weekend, it's just very tough to be a promoter, you know, and, and you've got elevated purses like the Frostbuster stuff, you know, that's a little higher than what you pay weekly. Yeah. Um, and then you got obviously a really good example coming up this weekend at, at Marshalltown with a, with a very big purse that without sponsors, you likely probably can't, um, have. Yeah, I mean that's honest. yeah. Without without money coming in, it's hard to spend the money going yeah. out, and then all those sponsors, all those billboards, all that stuff helps align you or the facility with doing events like that for the race. Yeah, you know, at the you end know, of the day, and then if when you have bad weather, to me, it's just I just I just go, oh gosh, I could it just make. Oh, you think hurt. you go, oh gosh, <laughs> it just makes my stomach hurt. It yeah. really does makes my stomach hurt. When, oh, it is. I mean, I those, are the days, those are the days. Those are the days. You know that it's tough. Like that. You know, it's a. It's we've always talked about it. The days at four thirty when it rains on the west side of town and it doesn't do anything at the racetrack, people yep. have already made their mind up. They're not coming. Well, I'm not. Yeah. Ah, it rained. Yeah. It, exactly. they don't, or they don't it might rain there, even though it, it yeah. looks like rain. Yeah. So it, it's tough. It's uh, like, you know. I don't think it, people it, realize. Jerry, for example, give us a ballpark figure to open up your gate. Even on a weekly show, or even for th- this special show, what's it cost you? And you know, ballpark. You know, to open ballpark. that gate up. Six to nine thousand dollars, and that's just starting cash. That's not. That's, that's you not know, by the time you get, you know, you got to go get change order. You got, I mean, you know, the first night's always the hardest because you have no inventory. You know, so I mean, it's X amount of dollars in food. It's X amount of dollars in pop. It's X amount of dollars in beer, and then you've got to pay your, um, you know, your first three or four nights of insurance up front, plus the premium that nobody thinks. Thinks, and then you had to clean you had to pay to get the facility yeah, you know you, spend, you had to pay for yeah, track prep I you spend two or three weeks getting you know with, some uh, ex, with extra help that you don't have during the week right. and you're taking care of them i mean that for those first I nights mean, are always and with like you said without having that that sponsor money it's like the racer who knows that they need to spend this on their race car but they don't have it but they get the you know they get sponsors and their sponsors help their race program just like our sponsors help us get the doors open to bring the racer in. I think yeah. that I've said this before. I think that every racer should, should, should be an official at some point in time 
you know, be the person that is actually involved in making calls on the racetrack and see how challenging See what it, it takes to prep a track. I think, yes, and that's what I was going to get to. I think every racer should, should at some point in time, and a lot of them do. You know, I mean, a lot of racetracks out there right now are being run by, by racers, mm-hmm. you know, promoters who still race, promoters who have raced, promoters whose kids are racing. You know, th- there's a lot of attachment to the people who are on the back end running races because they love the sport to begin with. That's, you know, so, but I do think everybody who's, who's a racer, should should experience officiating at one point in time and should experience what it's like to run a race an actual race with money on the line the risk yeah. associated with it because it it is incredibly stressful oh i mean you get you know uh, you, you hear it, it is not time, easy you know, to do yo oh just just race tonight you'll be okay it's gonna be a little chilly but just race just race okay well yeah. i know you want to race as a racer but we well, have to fans, make sure well, to keep the doors open, and if the fans don't come in and we lose ten grand, are you prepared to write that check because you want to race for the ten grand? The argument that always bothers me is the people that are going on social media now and say, "Well, back when I was here, back when I was there, if there was a race on the schedule, we'd race." Well, times have changed, and we've talked about how people's entertainment options have changed. The yeah. ability to to access weather information has changed. And I don't think people realize that it is a, it's a business decision. I have always said it's a business that's open roughly 20 nights a year. And if you want to cancel for whatever reason, I don't care who you are, if it's your bottom line, yeah. it has 20 nights of business, I will never question a promoter who wants to pull the plug on a show. It's their, it's their business. It and gets they, back to the operating expenses. Yeah. It gets yeah. back to those advertisers. Mm-hmm. It gets back to the big picture where, again, I think most racetracks, and, and I'm sure you can attest, Jerry, that, that – it's a, it's an up and down. It's a roller coaster oh, ride. Oh no, it's never. You have, you have a you have you you may make a little bit money on one event and lose a little money on another. You may make a lot on one event. You may lose a lot on another. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of ups and downs. When it comes. Every day is a risk. And so I think at the end of the day, the promoters are kind of looking like this, but they they want to get at the end. They want that to just be a little increase. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, because it's not hard for for with the risk that you associate yourself with on a weekly basis. I look at like Boone, for example, their weekly purse is right at fifteen thousand mm-hmm. dollars. I didn't know that until last Saturday night. Fifteen grand is that's what, an, uh, that's I the mean, purse. Yeah. That's I mean, just yeah. the weekly purse. That's, and that's not the operating. Yeah, expenses. we're both and we're both pretty similar yeah. on that. Yeah. Uh, that's it, just, you know. So, so I've always six said to $8, you know thousand dollars to open your facility up and you add that on top of the purse. You know, and you're you're easily pushing twenty five grand at a facility like Marshalltown and Boone. Yeah, you better you better. I, I always tell myself I better make sure to at least break even that you better have almost thirty grand. Yeah, that gets brought in. Yeah, and, and, and I don't mind sharing those numbers with people because it's not like we're hiding. You know, I I feel transparency to a point. You got to be there so they understand that. Oh, this this is this is a because I don't think that, you know, I don't think that the racers, they don't, it's not that they don't know, but they, they, they don't know those hidden things that you don't think about. One of racers' they, mentality is they just want to race. I mean, I don't think yeah. that those are things that and play. That's, I mean, me, I want to I wanna run. I mean, right. I want to have races every night on the schedule. Yeah, but if you're, like I say, you're open 20 nights a year on average, you could have, this time of year, one awful night that you're digging out of the rest yeah. of the season. You've yeah. only got yep. so many nights to make money off of a night where yeah. you might have lost you, your yeah, ass. Yeah, you don't get like a regular I mean, that, like like a regular business, yeah, like, so. say, a grocery store or a mom-and-pop pizza joint or that has 52 weeks. Right. If they have three or four bad weeks, they've got 48, 49 weeks right. to yeah. dig that out. We've only got, in in our industry, we've only got three, four months. I I use Marshalltown and Boone as an example because they're they're facilities that around here, generally speaking, and just in general, I think people don't um, associate as high-paying racetracks. You know what I mean? They're not running lots of real big special events like 10,000 or 20,000 to win super late model races and stuff like that consistently. Yeah. You know, Boone... Boone gets kind of like, oh, you, you, you'll see people say, oh, Boone don't pay that good. Well, they, their mod purse is 3500 bucks a week. That's about what it is, which is a probably about average, I think, with a lot of our racetracks, maybe a yeah. little higher than, than average. If you look at it, I mean, across we're, the board. We're, we're, so we're about It doesn't average. take long for that, those numbers when you're running multiple divisions. It doesn't take long for those numbers to get pretty big. You know, and fifteen grand for a weekly purse is, that's, that's, that's a fair amount of money. You throw the operating expenses in there between, you know, so you're up between twenty and twenty-five grand uh, 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 on a on an absolutely 
Grand Slam home run event at Boone Speedway on a weekly show, it ain't going to make $25,000. Oh, you're no. risking $25,000, but you're not making twenty five. dollars You know, on a really good night, you, you don't make what you risk. It's not, it's worse than the casino at the end of the day. You oh, know? yeah. At least you go play blackjack. I mean, in the, in the racing world, the house always wins. I mean, because you know here's where the house is, yeah. and you don't get much over the house. Right. So, so you, you know, you, 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 it's just, to me, it's, there, there's an incredible lot of risk associated with it. So, again, back to the sponsors we started this conversation on. They're so vital. They're so yeah. important. And I think racetracks really super appreciate any effort that they get from local businesses, any support. You know, the racers who race that also pull in some of their, their, their you know, the business money to support some nightly shows. I, mean, you see. I always tell my sponsors, how can I help you? You've right. helped me. How can I help you yep. now? It, it, it really does improve racing across the board. It does make a difference. You know, so the breweries of the world and the guys like Todd Van Eaton and some of the other people that, that I know around that Boone Speedway yeah. stuff, it's, it's very helpful. You know, it really does matter. They are making a difference. They may not think that, but they, but, but they definitely are. It matters, you know, so. Yeah, we appreciate it. Hopefully you have a good race this weekend. I think it should be. It should be really good. I'm not going to go. I'm not going to be there. I'm not boycotting Marshalltown or nothing like that. And the weather actually looks good. Yeah, so that's not your excuse this week. So I'm not going to blame it on the weather. But Jim's going, aren't you, Jim? I'm Friday? Gonna, I'm going I'm to go Friday. That means I'm, if I go, I'll go Thursday. Oh, <laughs> I'm still Why on. Why don't you follow me over there today and help me work on some stuff? <laughs> I'm still on the cheerleader schedule. I got cheerleading Friday night in Des Moines that I Oh, have that's to right. Go you to. are in Des Moines this weekend. My wife is going to Waco, so it's me and Kennedy on, and, and I'm trying what? to think. What? Oh, oh she's, she's going yeah, to Waco, and, and you are. I'm not. I asked Virginia. She said she missed one cheer comp. I don't remember that. Kennedy's been doing this since she was two. She's 13 now. So for 11 years, I don't think Virginia's missed that I remember a cheer comp. So I am taking my 13 year old to a cheer comp this weekend by myself. When is that? And I think my wife's a little nervous. She Friday night, she has to cheer at downtown. Uh, not down. No, we're staying the downtown. Same place. She's cheering at the fairgrounds. At the, at the, at the Jacobson fairgrounds? building, Jacobson Center, or whatever. Maybe they call I'll skip Marshalltown Friday and go to a cheer comp. So I'm so. going to that Friday night. I'll go watch. I'll drive sweat. past Marshalltown, <laughs> but I probably won't stop because I'll have Kennedy. She's got track. She's in. I got track meet tonight. Track meet Thursday. It is that time of year. Track it is. golf, she's cross country. Active. Oh, cross country's in the fall. Cross country's isn't fall. Yeah. So I get it when racers, you know, when you see racers kind of like get a little bit less dedicated to, to being weekly racers at times. Yeah. You know, you got kids, it's when hard. they got kids, you know, and this time, hard. this time of the year too, is hard for like in the Midwest because uh, it's always been, you know, a lot of racers are farmers and if we're getting yeah. into planting season, you know, getting into that time where it's, you gotta you get, work. You know, it's pay the bills. You lo look at farming like racing. You've got just a I certain think, amount of window yeah. to make that happen and, yeah. Sometimes you Wahoo have to give and take. Didn't even race, did he? Well, yeah. I don't know if that he was, was there. he at Boone? No, nope. Wahoo went to Stu. He, he went to Stewart on Thursday, and then um, let's see. Federal crop for his area is the eleventh, so he had to go to work and get. Was some he at Boone? Done. No, no. no. Was he at Marshall? I, I didn't know. He, he was not. He was not at Marshalltown because he call. He calls me. I didn't know if he just skipped Marshalltown because. Oh no, he didn't skip because he he skipped them all after that. They had to go but to you know we you know you, you talk about Marshalltown coming up. You got Junction Motor Speedway. Uh, you know Randy Wolf, a new promoter there. They're kicking off with a two day show. You got Tipped In and the Dark Side Boys. They're going to have a two day show at the Cedar Cedar County Raceway. No, it's just one day. It's just Saturday. It's one day. It's is Saturday. it that is all it that Saturday? all star? It's oh yes, Saturday night. Yeah, their stuff's all uh, sanctioned this year. Yeah. Yep. Harlan Marsh's car. Yeah. Marsh's car won it. Marshalltown on. Friday night, Tom Berry behind the wheel. Tim Harlan's up. racing. You know, they're racing everything. Mods, late models, mm -hmm. race savers, stock cars, hobbies. So we've we survived the eclipse. Yes. Barely. And racing is picking up. Yep. And the weather's going to start getting warmer. Maybe that's all we needed was an eclipse. I'm just Did happy you, about I, the so, weather so, getting okay. a little warmer. Speaking of, speaking of the eclipse. It was bad last week. <laughs> so speaking oh of the God. eclipse, I saw something on the book face that... The eclipse, like the total eclipse, was four minutes and twenty eight seconds. Total eclipse of your heart. Yeah, total eclipse of your heart was Turned four. Around, bright eyes. Yeah, it was four minutes and twenty seven seconds. So you could wait one second when it started play it, and you could listen to the total eclipse of the heart while you watched the total eclipse. 
Did they do that on purpose? I don't know. It's kind of like if you what uh, what uh, you know we had a good what album. What, going what, what album is the it? end? What Bonnie, album is that? Bonnie. Somebody sings that song, don't she? What's her name? Bonnie. 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 Bonnie Tyler. Bonnie Tyler. Yes. But if you watch what what uh, that song's gonna be what, stuck what in Pink my head Floyd now. album is of, is it? If you start at the beginning of the Wizard of Oz <laughs> and let it is it Dark Side of the Moon. And you play it backwards. What's no, you don't play it backwards. What's your point? Yes. Just that there's weird Red things rum. that... Red rum. No, that's the shining red oh. rum. Red so rum. what's your point? Jesus. I just something different to talk about for a second. There was about, no maybe, point. Maybe, maybe we can edit this whole deal out of the podcast and save our I thought viewers. we were going somewhere. Well, you're we're talking about all the races now. that, that uh, we're starting to get busier. 58 sanctioned events this weekend, which is about wow. double what we've been used to. So Yep, picking up. We're getting there. And the weather's yeah. picking up. Your, your yard is going to start mowing. I was going to wear my grass mowing shirt. From Dude, there. I was so mad because I, I'm usually the fir- I'm usually the first guy in the neighborhood to mow. Well, I've kind of been waiting for uh, for for Cole, oh Cole, the paper boy. You know, he's not only a paper boy, a tree boy, and a lawn boy. They Cole take Fensky. care of my yard. And uh, so they came today, and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna wait till they wait till they put the the fertilizer down, then I'll mow this weekend. Everybody around me is mowed, and I'm just like, yeah. Ugh. I had one neighbor mow so far. I'm like, oh, yeah. it's going to be on here by the end of the week. I don't be the last one. I don't oh, want to yeah, be the no. first. You can't be the first, be the last. I don't, yeah. <laughs> don't want to be the last. So I'm can't looking, win the show, I am the looking show. forward to mowing. You guys put your I do focus and attention it on. It is the best. Oh. Oh. Strangest thing. Stripes. I feel like, just, I, I feel like Jim Harbaugh. Stripes have got to be pinpoint. I'd be like you gotta Jim keep Harbaugh. up with the neighbors. They asked Jim Harbaugh if you weren't a coach, what you want to do for a living? And he said landscaping. Yeah. That's no me. kidding. Yes, that's what he said. Me too. And I bet he said that without hesitation too. He strikes me as a type who knows that's yeah. yeah. Landscaping. Yep. Landscaping. Likes to mow. All righty. Well, well, yeah, we'll wrap it up. Days. We've probably been an hour now, I bet. Close to. Hour and five. Oh, oh it's ten fifty six. Wow. Time flies when you're Until have next fun. time. Until next time it'll be three six. As opposed to three two, which is really five. Which well, I mean, I had my I had my eclipse glasses on. It. Are we Still. having a podcast on that four twenty? You guys were talking about. Guys were throwing numbers. <laughs> what is Doctor, today? are we having one That's on like four twenty? It's, it's eleven. Who, days. who could we have as a guest on that That's day? Like Hang Snoop Dogg. Let's get Snoop to come in. Yeah, let's get. Snoop. Oh, so you've done some research on the four twenty thing? Whoop. No, I just remember you saying it's it a last Saturday. Four twenty is a Saturday. Yeah. Whoop, dang it, that's going to be a goofy night at Boone. You yeah. might want to come fill in. <laughs> <laughs> really, well, I worked for you Saturday night. I suppose I could. Do oh, it. really? That's <laughs> we'll have like a Joe Rogan, Elon yeah. Musk podcast. Ooh, yeah. How could we? Ah, we couldn't do one on four twenty. Well. Because well, we could record get, it on like four seventeen and think it's four twenty. We could, we could tell as long as you why. don't get sick, Jerry. Uh, pre race four twenty. Oh no, I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll make sure the dinosaurs <laughs> don't come out <laughs> that day. <laughs> oh shoot! Uh, <laughs> well, I suppose on that note, uh, until, we'll next s- until next time, uh, head on out and uh, take in some great, uh, great IMCA uh, racing action live at the racetrack. If you can't make it, of course, there's a ton of it on IMCA TV, so make sure and do that. And if you want to go back and see the Frostbusters or anything else, go get that replay pass, twenty four ninety nine, thirty days. Ain't gonna be thirty days till you see us again. Thanks for joining in and we'll see you at a racetrack.